Hello, and welcome back to the Neuroscience of Learning. I'm Stella Collins, and this time I have with me my colleague, Tina Harris. And we're going to be looking at how you motivate minds and bodies to learn. If we want people to transfer knowledge into the workplace, we need them to feel motivated. And we tend to learn what matters to us, the things we run away from, the things we run towards, the things we love, the things we want to eat. We learn what's important to us. But as we're learning and as we're thinking about our motivation, our brain states aren't static. We're having a huge range of different states in our brains as we go through a learning process. And most of those states are under the control of neurotransmitters. They're very complex. There are possibly hundreds of them. Scientists haven't discovered them all yet. But we're just going to focus on a few that are really important for learning. So the first one I'm going to mention is curiosity. And curiosity is the candle in the wick of learning. It kickstarts learning. And curiosity is fueled by that ever-present dopamine. Dopamine is incredibly important for reward, for attention, actually for physical movement. And you've probably also heard that it's connected to addiction. So dopamine is hugely important to us in terms of learning. Another really important neurotransmitter for um, me uh, memory is acetylcholine because it helps us to pay attention. And attention is the key to memory. Sometimes in learning, we get a bit stuck. We need to sort of persist. We need to try harder. But when we have got stuck and then we do persist, we get a real feeling of satisfaction. And that's serotonin you're feeling then. It's a really nice, feel-good, warm neurotransmitter. Makes us feel pleased with ourselves. And one of the things that's really, really important for learning, and I know, Tina, you're very interested in this, is making sure that we help reduce stress because stress is very bad for learning. It might help us learn to run away from a fierce tiger, but it doesn't help us learn the sort of things we need to learn at work. And the hormones that, or the neurotransmitters that are particularly important there are cortisol and adrenaline. Both are needed to help us escape from a scary stuff, but they also reduce the ability of our brain to learn. So Tina, we've had a little bit about the neurotransmitters. How do you promote motivation? As people are going on their journey, they need to automate skills, the habits, they need to transfer their skills into work. What do you do? So actually, there's a lot of things you can do to influence people's states. And you've spoken about motivation, but you've also spoken about curiosity, um, all of which are linked, highly interlinked. So there's lots of different things we do. Um, my top things, I think, certainly for motivation, is about why. So we often jump straight into what <laughs> and, uh, and without actually linking into the why. So I make sure I spend time in my learner's shoes before I even start my design, thinking about what's their why. Um, and then in the design, I make sure that we have the why in the design itself. And we give learners the opportunity to reflect on that and link to their own situations and really see the benefit of what they're doing and how it will help them um, in the longer term. So that's really important. Um, other things we do, um, you said before about stress, um, and that was interesting. Setting the tone of the learning is really important right from the start. So uh, we want challenge is fine, but we need challenge in a safe environment. So things like, you know, giving people opportunity to guess things beforehand mm -hmm. shows that it's OK to get it wrong. Um, doing things like um, asking them what they already know. So just inviting contribution. So guessing and, and, and asking what you know is really good for the brain um, to stimulate the right the right places. So definitely um, both of those tactics can help to create the right state. Um, and yeah curiosity to so use novelty do something a little bit different don't give all the answers straight away um but give it give get people thinking and wondering why you've done something um but always give them an answer it doesn't have to be immediate but fairly soon after they need to have an answer okay great thank you tina so we're going to sign off now and we'll see you soon for more ideas about neuroscience in learning bye bye bye